1998, when I was still a young boy, there were two research PhD students, PhD students in California, and they were working on a project. And the whole idea was they were looking for a search engine. And they had a thesis advisor. And based on what the, the um, suggestions he made, they were able to get a grant from the National Science Foundation in the, in the US. And with that, they were able to, to transform what was just a project into the, what is one of the world's largest companies. First slide, please. If you look at these companies here, they all started small. When you start a revolution, you need an idea, you need a passion, commitment, and you need a team. Years before Google, two other people started their company in a garage in Palo Alto, California. That company became Hewlett Packard, again, one of the largest companies in the world. In the 1970s, two people, two separate people, came together. They dropped out of college, and they started what we now know as Apple, a company that many of your uh, phones are, uh, come from. Next slide, please. Today, those companies which began in a garage, which began as a research project, have a value that is equal or exceeding the entire GDP of the Philippine economy. That's why startups are so important. That's why each of you here is so important. Because you're the next wave after outsourcing, after remittances, after manufacturing. We're counting on you to power the Philippine economy. We're counting on you to create wealth, create jobs, and help this country grow. Next slide, please. You see here, the things are changing fast. In the last year alone, the value of Philippine startups more than doubled. That's with the help of a lot of people, including the government, including the private sector, including organizations like Business World and Spark. All you have to do is take that chance and try. Now we're still small compared to other areas like Singapore and Jakarta, but we're on our way. Next slide, please. What's missing? We need more mentorship, we need more networking, but those opportunities are coming. Government support, they just passed a new startup bill. I let the others who are coming after me talk more about that. But the new startup bill just changes the game. It made, it's a whole set of new incentives for people that want to start companies here. And what we're also looking for is funding. Funding, funding, funding. Next slide, please. This shows you what, what's possible. Last year alone, $7.86 billion flowed into Southeast Asia for startups. It's a huge amount. It's many times the 2.8 or so that was invested in Southeast Asia a few years ago. Again, we still have a long way today to go. We're on the map. We're 0.472% of the uh, total. But I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, it's growing. At least we're up there. Next slide, please. This is who we're up against. Other companies have incubators, which are often supported by the government and which often offer money to startups to, to uh, relocate there. Singapore has something called Block 71. That's on your top right-hand side. Those are buildings and buildings of uh, just dedicated to startups. Malaysia has something called magic in the bottom left-hand corner. Again, they're putting money into this. 
because everyone's realizing that the multiplier effect of one startup company is tremendous in terms of jobs and, uh, and, and wealth creation. Of course, Silicon Valley is there. They've created many of the startups here. Grab came from Malaysia, believe it or not, then relocated to, to Singapore because of their incentives. We also have Startup Chile. That whole uh, Startup Chile is dedicated to attracting Chileans who left the country to come back and start their own companies, which we're trying to do here because as one of the uh, earlier speakers said, we have so many Filipinos all over the world, particularly in Silicon Valley, who want to come back and help start a company over here. Next slide, please. Now, what do you have to go through? It helps if you have a rich father or mother. Pero hindi naman kailangan. Hindi naman kailangan ganun. I'll give you the example of somebody who's in the audience. His name is Ron by John. He started a company just a few years ago called Chatbot. It was incubated at one of the, at the, one of the incubation, incubation hubs that, we, that the government started with the private sector called Kubo. Within two years, or I think even within one year, he was able to sell Chatbot to Sterling Corporation. He went through these different rounds, raising money from his family and friends, raising money through the angel networks, which are more and more dominant here in the Philippines and in Manila and other cities. And then with that help, he was able to develop this company called Chatbot. He sold it to Sterling Corporation. He made so much money that he was able to buy his mother a home for the first time ever. So that's the kind of story you want to encourage. You can start from nowhere and nothing. You can be a student, you can be a professor, you can be a professional. But as long as you have a dream and a passion and a commitment, someday, hopefully, you'll be up here encouraging other entrepreneurs to do the, start their own company and create wealth. Next slide, please. 2012, that was a game changer for the ecosystem. Our group, the MVP group, started something called Idea Space Foundation. Globe started something called Kickstart. And both have grown uh, the ecosystem by quite a great deal. Next slide, please. Anyone can join the Idea Space competition. We give you 1 million pesos if you make it to the top 10 in both support and funding. We used to take equity, but now we only take equity in the top three of those 10 startups. What are we trying to encourage? We're trying to change the culture here from a conservative, risk-averse culture. How many, of, how many of us have been told by our mothers and fathers, okay ka na okay ka na to say you're getting a regular salary. But if you have the guts to take a risk and take a chance, Join IP and Spaces competition. We got over 600 entries last year. And next week, October 22, we'll have our 80th startup that we've incubated and that we're going to launch. Next slide, please. These are some of our programs. We've got the acceleration program that I uh, mentioned. It's once a year. It's open to everybody from around the country. We're supporting our alumni with networking, and with potential funding opportunities through something that we call the Opportunity Fund. The Opportunity Fund, again, is open to everybody, not just to our alumni. We're interested in companies that are doing well, that have revenues, we'll invest in you. We may, it might be a loan, it might be in the form of equity in your company, that's something that we can negotiate. But come to us if you've got a company that you think is worth investing in. Next slide, please. This just shows you our different batches. And I'd like to say there are at least four of them here today, including there's one startup from uh, Kubo as well. Uh, please join. Uh, uh, take a look at their, uh, at their display. These are people who started small before today. Uh, they got revenues, and they're well on their way to, to doing, uh, doing well and hiring more people. So please uh, take a minute and stop by their, their booths at the side there. But you can see 
these are companies that come from different industries. So we'll take anything as long as it works and we'll give you the networking support to, to help you succeed. Next slide, please. In 2016, for the very first time, the public sector and the private sector got together to form what the Philippines has to challenge what they have in other countries. And it's called Kubo, named after the Baha'i Kubo, which actually, we have an actual model in our office. Next slide, please. Who are the partners? We have the Department of Science and Technology. We're going to be speaking later on. We have the Department of Trade and Industry. We have JP Morgan, and we have Idea Space Foundation. In just three years, Kubo, which offers free space, free internet, to anyone that has a startup company, they have um, launched or incubated something like 340 startups. They've got over 6,000 uh, members and something like 31,000 participants in their events. It's all free. It's courtesy of the Philippine government. So please thank them when they come up to speak after I do and give them a big hand of applause because they're putting their money where their mouths are. They're really supporting the startup ecosystem. They want you to succeed. We all want you to succeed. Just try it. And it's okay if you fail. You don't have to succeed the first time. See, Ron, who started the chatbot, he started the previous uh, startup which didn't work, but he came back and did it again and it worked. Next slide, please. These are just some examples of the startups that were incubated there. There is Exora, which is threatening to disrupt the electricity system in the country. It will enable you to choose who your electrical electricity provider would be. Can be hydro, can be wind, can be coal. But uh, with them, you'll be able to choose and hopefully lower your, your uh, electric bills, which is great for all of us. AdMob is a artificial intelligence uh, company. When you write a graph, uh, you'll see that often there's a TV screen in front of you that you can watch. That TV screen is watching you. It's not just you watching them. They're watching your facial expression because it's facial re recognition. If you smile, they'll take that into account. If you're not happy, they'll take that into account and they will vary the content of the ads that you're watching. Many of these startups are moving, are also establishing themselves in Singapore, but they're all Philippine homegrown, uh, homemade startups. Next slide, please. In addition, we're trying to help the country. We launched something called Rescue, which was for startups from all over Southeast Asia with a disaster-related innovation. The price was just $10,000, but we got over 140 entries from all throughout Asia. The winner was a Philippine startup called, what's it called? It was called uh, uh, Learn Talk or something. And the whole idea, uh, front learners, front learners, and we're using their technology in Marawi to help teachers there teach school without power, without internet, under a mango tree, because everything is in their kit. And we're, uh, other, there are other NGOs that are using their technology as well. Chatbot came in number two, then a startup from Singapore came in number, as number three. But the point is that we're using innovation to help in the many disasters that face our country. Next slide, please. Now recently, the OST very generously gave a grant to the uh, Kubo uh, innovation uh, uh, system because their whole idea was that they want to measure the 12 incubators that are around the country. And these are in Iloilo, Cagayan de Oro, Iligan, Baguio, Palawan, in other places, as well as Metro Manila. We want to raise the level of all of these incubator hubs to world-class level through international connections and through links with the private sector, both in their cities and overseas. And that's important to get you going, to get that kind of support. 
Next slide, please. My key message is that we've got to do this together. If one of you succeeds, we all succeed. So what on crap mentality? Because if one startup becomes a unicorn, it attracts more, more dollars, more pesos, more investment, more interest in this, in this area of the economy. So we want to succeed. And we can only do it if we work together, if we collaborate with each other, if we exchange ideas and support. One of my favorite quotes is, comes from a poet. It says, come my friends. It's not too late to seek a newer world. So let's build that newer world together. Because we need you, we need your energy, we need your imagination, we need your ideas. There are systems like Ideaspace and like Kubo which are there to support you, which are available for free. So please help us put the Philippines on the global startup economic map.